Hey guys, Keith from Kegman, and today we're talking about a new four inch triclover lid that we've just started to injection mold and put on the website. So it looks like this. Now it is four inch triclover here. I don't want you guys to confuse this with another lid that we've got on the Firms Yellow, which looks almost identical. So if you look at this lid here, this is from our Firmzilla tank here. I'm just gonna pull this one off this here. This is our Firmzilla lid. So this one has a threaded neck, not TC. So don't get confused. They look similar on the website, but they're actually, actually quite different. So you're probably asking, why have we made this plastic four inch TC lid? We do already have stainless steel four inch lids, which have ball lock posts, and even ones which have this uh, one and a half inch TC port on here. Well, one of the major reasons why we've done it is to allow Wi-Fi signal to get out of these stainless steel vessels. Basically, a stainless steel vessel like this acts like a Faraday cage, meaning that it's very, very hard for Wi-Fi signal to get out. So if you're using something like one of these uh, pill hydrometers, Look, these have been extremely popular. We sell them around the world and a lot of people love them being able to sort of track their fermentation process and use this as the, um, as the temperature probe inside a fermenter, for instance, and control a heating element or something like heating belts or something like that turning on or wrapped fermentation chamber. But the problem is if I dump this in the fermenter, because I've got a stainless steel lid on here, it basically is wiping out a lot of the Wi-Fi signal, meaning it's really, really hard to get a connection. Now, if you've got a stainless steel fermenter like this, it's exactly the same thing. You've got the perfect Faraday cage. If you've got a jacketed fermenter, so if you've got under the glycol jacket, it's even worse. You've almost got like two Faraday cages within each other and then getting a Wi-Fi signal out is virtually impossible. So with plastic, we already know there's very good science out there to show that plastic is able to get Wi-Fi signal or Wi-Fi signal is able to transmit through plastic much more easily. So even by having a small plastic opening like this on a fermenter, it greatly increases, it's like a window. So it greatly increases that Wi-Fi signal strength, allowing the Wi-Fi signal to get out. The second reason why we've done this is because also the four inch opening, it's really not that big when you think about it. So um, it's a common size used on many, many pressure fermenters now, including, you know, all, all these kegmenters are one of them. We've got a 29 liter and a, I think a 58 liter on the website. We've also got these brew built fermenters. We're stocking an increasing number of the brew built fermenters. I really love these fermenters. But with this opening size here, which is just a fraction over 100 millimeters, it's hard to fit all the components on there. So for instance, I've got this uh, lid here, which is on the brew built one. Let me just uh, show you this here. We've got on this lid here, you can see we've got um, two ball lock posts. We've got the coils here for uh, the glycol. And look, a lot of people don't use the glycol coils if you're putting this in a fermentation or some fermentation chamber or something like that. But because there's so much on the lid, um, we can only fit like, for instance, a one and a half inch TC port here. So you could put a butterfly valve and the smaller hot bong, but you can't fit on a bigger hot bong like this two inch one, which is kind of like my preferred one because it's a lot easier for the pelletized, um, you know, T90 pellets to go through that type of opening. So with the new lid, as you can see here, once I've got that fitted up uh, on there, I've got the ball lock posts on there, I can still kind of get to those and I've got the hot bong on there. This is a shape which is very, very hard to make out of stainless steel because of you know, the way that, uh, you know, the posts need to come on an angle. We also need to get this sort of cone open up like that so it can fit this two inch butterfly valve. It's really, really tricky to be able to make this out of stainless steel. So that's the other reason why I've used plastic on this device as well. Basically you can go on any four inch standard triclover opening that you've got with any fermenter. So handier to get all the parts on and allows Wi-Fi transmission strength to get out easily. So let's do a bit of testing on this and actually see how good the Wi-Fi signal strength is. Now for the testing that I've done, I'm actually using the uh, Nordic Semiconductor NRF app. Anyone can download the free app and I would encourage you guys, if you're ever doing testing or trying to improve a Wi-Fi signal through a fermenter or, or just through anything, uh, or if you're trying to improve, it, improve a Bluetooth signal, this app is really uh, fantastic. So what I've done in this instance, I've downloaded the app, I've put it on the phone, and I'm gonna show you how we've done a bit of testing here. So I've got the test conditions kind of like all set up here. I've got my kegmenter here. I'm using the standard lid which comes with the kegmenter. So this standard lid even has like a little hole through the middle of the stainless steel here. But as you can see, 
that hole is fairly small diameter and it's probably too small to let the wavelength get through to be quite honest with you. But look, let's do the testing and find out. I'm gonna try to keep everything in as exactly the same you know, conditions as possible. I don't wanna move anything else in the room. I'm gonna stand in exactly the same position and I'm gonna leave the phone on the bench in exactly the same position on the table as well. So with the first testing, I've already got the results. I've kind of recorded them on my phone. And basically I've got like a signal strength of negative 85 decibels. It sort of varied a little bit down to negative 84 up to negative 86. So I'm gonna sort of average that at about negative 85 in round numbers. Um, and that's basically with the pills sitting inside this um, and doing that test for about two or three minutes, just getting a number of readings out of there. So I've done that. I'm gonna switch over now to this plastic one and we're gonna see what uh, signal strength we've got. Okay, so we've just finished the testing and the results are quite impressive. I've basically got the, uh, the plastic lid on here. So this plastic four inch lid, and then I've got the hot bong on there. I've got some stainless clamps. It's got the butterfly valve and that whole assembly, as you can see. So I've done this test exactly where we're standing right now. And with the negative 65, it's actually about 20 decibels better. So if you remember, like the previous test, we had negative 85, so it's a 25 decibel change between the stainless steel lid. So I compared that one was negative 85, and this whole assembly here was negative 65. So that is quite a substantial difference. So that's kind of the difference between actually getting a signal out at all or not being able to get a reliable connection. So generally speaking, if signals get worse than about negative 67 decibels, it's considered to be, you know, like really not ideal and your connection reliability will decrease substantially. So the other thing I wanted to mention is it's a logarithmic scale. So when you talk about 20 decibels, it doesn't sound like a lot, I guess, but one of the things you've got to remember is with a logarithmic scale, that is actually 100 times better signal strength. So if you go from 65 up to, sorry, negative 65 to negative 85, that's actually 100 times improved signal strength when you're comparing the, those two numbers. So absolutely, if you are wanting to use a Wi-Fi device in a stainless steel fermenter, you need to have some type of plastic opening. Possibly you might get it to just work without it. And if you wanted to use a stainless steel lid, it's possible that it might work. But in my opinion, it's highly recommended if you want to use a stainless steel fermenter like a brew built fermenter or a keg mentor or something like that, get yourself at least some type of plastic opening which will allow that Wi-Fi signal out of that stainless steel vessel. And of course, if you want to use any of this other cool stuff like hot bongs, look, I think it's also a fantastic tool for that job as well. So look, you'll be able to see this product on the website. Um, look, it's not going to be super expensive. We've obviously dropped a fair bit of money on tooling to have to re-inject injection mold this new part, but hopefully you guys find it really useful. And lastly, of course, sign up to the, uh, to the, uh, the, the, the channel, bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe now, then you can join the channel and then you'll get notif notified of any new products that are getting released. And of course, join our Facebook homebrew community group. So uh, yeah, just search that on Facebook and join that one. And there's heaps of people sharing tips and tricks on how to use all that gear. So that's it for today. See you guys next time. Bye.